Hey guys, and welcome to this week's Friday Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Every Friday I answer your questions, so let's jump straight into it. First one, can we make compound clips on the iPad version? And yes, I made a video here on my YouTube channel. It's actually this one, it's hidden below that one, Pro Editor Hack. This simple hack separates Pro from beginners. In this video, I go over all the things you need to know about compound clips. And just to give you something in this video today, so if I, for example, have two clips and I wanna bake them into one clip so that everything that I do with it, I can create a compound clip. How? Most important, it doesn't work on the cut page. You have to come to the edit page. And then you can just select those clips that you wanna bake and then I say right click and I say here, new compound clip. In the next window, I can give it a name. So I say compound clip two, which is kind of interesting. When you have a compound clip, it also comes here to your um, media pool. So here compound clip two. So even if I delete this one, I will have the compound clip here in the future. I can reuse it. It's kind of cool. Okay, the rest is in the other video. So question number two, this guy was bombarding my channel the last four days, every day, copy paste the same question. So I got annoyed, but the question is good. So I wanna uh, answer the question today. Hey Daniel, how can I create a new fusion clip with two clips on the edit page in the Vinci Resolve for the iPad? When I try to do that, I don't see the new fusion clip option. Thanks to help me. So this is the reason why I didn't answer immediately because there is something missing on the iPad. And what it is, I will explain you this right now. So what he's trying to do, let's just reverse what we did here with the two clips. He wants to create a fusion clip. And when you select drag and drop, like when you select those two clips and you do right click on the desktop under new comp uh, compound clip, it will show you new fusion clip clip, which is not the same like, for example, if you do right click here in the media pool, you can create a new fusion composition. So this is, for example, that one here. If I drag and drop this in here, I already did this here. So that's the fusion composition. But the problem is I can't put media to the co fusion composition, not here in the edit page. I can do this in the fusion page. I can put media in here as well. But it's a little bit complicated, but I will give you now the solutions as well. So the problem is it doesn't work on the iPad. I searched now for the last couple of days, I couldn't find how we can create those fusion clips, but they work because if we now look, for example, here on this one, you see here, I have a fusion clip with a couple of stars. And in this fusion clip, I already have those clips in. How did I create them? I wanted to know if it's not possible at all, if they put it out on purpose, or is it just somehow, maybe it will come in the next updates, but it is working. Why? I went to my desktop, and I opened DaVinci Resolve here and I created that project here, saved it and then opened the project here and I have my fusion clip here. And the cool thing is, same like with the compound clip, I show you that in the video about compound clips, but compound clips, you can always right click and say open in timeline. With a fusion clip, you can do the same. It doesn't work with a fusion composition. If I do right click here, I cannot open in timeline, but I can do this with a fusion clip. So I can open in timeline and now here open in my timeline. I'm basically here timeline one. I'm now in fusion clip one. I can change and rearrange the clips in my timeline. So I can even put new clips in. That's amazing. And I can always go back, just double tap here timeline one and I, then I'm here. So now you're wondering, okay, what, what, what's the big deal? Like why is this so important that we can actually create fusion clips if they are kind of the same like a compound clip? I wanna show you this. If I create my compound clip again, new compound clip, so compound clip two. And if I go now with this compound clip to the fusion page. So first I have to explain you what you wanna do with it. Of course you, you use fusion clips because you wanna do some effects on the fusion page, okay? And he wanted to create an amazing animation. It's a tutorial. Maybe in the future I will try to redo this here on this channel. But for this purpose, I just made it very simple. So you see here my fusion clip with the two clips and you see the top clip has a mask, an ellipse, just a round mask. And I still I still see the thing below. And sometimes in a fusion composition, you wanna see both because if I, for example, if I co come here to the original and I see my clip here on the top, if I now go to the fusion page, I don't see the media below. So if I do effects and anything, it on I only see in the fusion page what is now in the fusion page, but not the stuff below. So. I can still create mask, of course, but I don't wanna go into that in this video. But the problem is now, I show you now, if I have a compound clip and I go into the fusion page, I only see one media. So that means both of my clips are now baked into one 
and I can't see or do or manipulate anything with those clips here inside of that uh, fusion clip. So you're basically lost because it's somewhere else. But if you want to do that, and in a purpose like in my example here with the fusion clip, I want to do that. So if I go into this fusion page here, for example, a fusion clip already shows you media one, media two, and now I could just add an ellipse on top of that one and I still see the below and I can now do adjustments to that. Okay, so that's the big difference. That's why we want fusion clips. So what is the workaround? I have two workarounds in this video because we still don't have the feature to create fusion clips, right? Workaround number one is the easier one even if it sounds more complicated. Why? Create one fusion clip in a project like I did right here and save the project. Because the problem is I was trying to put them like the fusion clip, I wanted to put them into my power bin. But if you do this, then it says multicam, compound clips, fusion clips, and timelines cannot be put in a power bin. Why would I try to do this? Because if I have this fusion clip and I can go back here in open in timeline, I can always change the stuff that it's inside. So I could basically manipulate the inside for my new project. And I wanted to have this in every project that's why I wanted to put it into a power bin because power bins you can always open in other projects as well, but it doesn't work that way. So what is the workaround? Just save one template project that you can always open here just to copy the fusion clip. So if I copy this one now and I go into another project, I have one fusion clip and you can now work and start with that one. So now you're wondering why would you even wanna do something like this? Because now I show you the second way what you could do. So if you, for example, come into a clip into the fusion, you can always add media from the media pool. So for example, let's say here in my media pool, the other clip, that one, I can drag and drop this in and I can start working with all of the stuff. But the problem is that now our clips are not aligned anymore because it will just start wherever that clip that I just moved into my timeline will start. So you, you could go into keyframes here and change the keyframes for the different video clips and change the positioning and everything. So there is a workaround, but it's just more complicated. It is actually easier if you do this in a fusion clip here by open timeline and you just change whatever you want because it will recognize where the clips are. Okay, that is the main difference. That is why we want fusion clips and if Blackmagic is listening to this long video, I hope they bring this back because this is important if you wanna do anything on a fusion page with a couple of different clips in it. But those are the two ways. You can either just work in a fusion clip. You can always bring in clips. So if you wanna work with more clips, you can do, there is a media pool here, but then you have to make sure you basically start aligning the clips inside of fusion or you do the workaround with the fusion clip once created on the desktop and then you just open that on the iPad as a template project. Hey Daniel, great channel and very helpful. You just trimmed all clips and expanded them. Please can you share the shortcuts? Dankeschön. <laughs> that was in my last video and this made me first, I was very confused because this was nothing very complicated what I did there, but I show you what I did in the video. In the video, I used the play hat and I hit cut and I deleted the rest like I did right now. Now I do this in slow motion. I place the playhead because the playhead is now here. I put S on my keyboard. So now we have a cut here, if you look there. And then I just selected with the pencil everything here and I hit delete, it was gone. And ex extending, I can always extend a couple of clips if I select them like this and then place my pencil on the end. Oops, in the end, then you see this and then I can extend them. That's basically what I did. But there is a shortcut if you were actually asking for that. I made a video here, you need to use this Da Vinci hack. And in this hack, I show you even a shortcut how you can do extensions just with one shortcut. So you definitely check out this video here. So how do I make sure that the sound is recorded from the microphone and not from the in built-in microphone on the iPad? That is a very loaded question. I was basically looking into this today and it's not as simple as just going to the microphone settings and changing it. Sometimes yes, sometimes not. So I found an article and I would basically just link this article. It explains a lot of different things that we can do on the iPad. But general speaking, if you have an app, so no, number one, if you have a microphone that is USB-C and you play, plug it in like the microphone that I used in the past, it automatically recognizes it as an a microphone. If I plug in my headphones, Bluetooth headphones, and I'm not using it for a voice call, just on voice memo, it doesn't work 
with them. It will actually put in the internally and I couldn't change it. So for that, you need a different software or a different recording software or sometimes like, ah, oh, it's complicated, okay? It's very complicated. It's not as easy as just saying, I wanna use this. So I leave you with this. There is an article here that explains a lot of things. Very complicated. Awesome video, Daniel. Can you tell me if you are struggling as well with click and slide using the magic keyboard, moving things around in the timeline is a nightmare. Any tips will be welcomed. <laughs> this is a good question. So yes, so if I use the magic keyboard here, it is not as big, of course, as theirs. So when I sometimes have problems, like for example, if I want to drag and drop something down, my mouse is now on the end, but I can use my second finger and just keep touching it. Okay. So now I'm on the corner. I just go with the next finger down here and I can take over. So it will not uh, stop. I can do this. And then if I stop pushing it, it's time to end the video. <laughs> yeah, that's why most of the times I use the pencil because with the pencil I have control over the whole screen, of course. But sometimes I use, especially for those videos here that you can see my pointer, I use the pointer as well. And where you have to be aware is sometimes if you press longer, the right click will open up. At the beginning, I was very annoyed about this because it, yeah, because we have right click when we press longer somewhere, right? And I understand it's not perfectly right now and maybe in the future they will do this. And especially on the edit page because we have more right click options. On the cut page, there's not so many right click options. So you don't run into this issue so often. But what is my workaround? I just adopt it to be fast. So if I, for example, want to slide this, the playhead, I'm not touching it and holding it too long because then this opens and then I uh, have to do it again. No. I touch it and then I just move it fast. Or for example, even if I want to do it, let's say here, I want to change this very uh, incremental and it, I don't want that this opens up, right? So what I do is I actually grab it and do it fast and then slow. Because if I'm not on the same position anymore, it doesn't open the right click and now I can just hold it, okay? That's my workaround. It, because if I touch it, it opens the the right click thing and that is annoying. And this is basically the same all over the place in DaVinci Resolve. Just grab something and do it fast and then you have slow because then it basically, you bypassed the right click. Does it make sense? Anyway, I hope this is helpful for you. This was a long Q&A Friday video with some answers to a lot of important questions. If you have any questions about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, just let me know them here in the comments and I will answer them next Friday in the Q&A video. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, subscribe, and we we'll see us in the next video. I'm Daniel, bye.